here I am in the workspace and in the workspace you can see that the first folder is node modules we have already learned the use of this node modules in the previous video then we have the projects I'll come to this projects folder later but first let's focus on this editor config file this editor config file basically is used to tell some settings for the development so here we have defined some rules for example the code type is single it means in any ts file we will simply use the single code because in javascript or typescript we can define a string by using the single quote and the double quote so here which one we want to use in this application just for the consistency we can define the settings over here the quote will be single max line length how many maximum characters you want in your one single line you can define these settings over here and you will see the main use of this file when you will work with multiple developers for example one developer has a habit to use the single code the second one has the habit to work with the double code but if you are defining the settings over here in this editor config file then both the developers are forced to work with these settings it is applicable to all the files care set intent intent size all these things are available over here then we have this git ignore because we are working on a project and there are several files that are specific only for the development and some of them are required for the production so here in the git ignore file we can define all those folders and files that we do not want to check in in our repository it means we are telling our git that ignore all these things that we have defined over here and in the git ignore file if you will write something with this hash then that is considered as the comment and without the hash those are the actual line so here we are telling that First we have this forward slash then the dist it means we are telling whatever we have defined in this dist file do not check in it in the repository same things over here at the bottom side we have some dot idea it means we are telling that all the files that have the extension dot idea do not check in there similarly for the dot project the main use of dot git ignore file is telling our repository that do not check in these folders and file in the repository the next file is the angular dot json file and this is a very important file let's see what we have over here first we have the schema the schema is json then we have the cli analytics false okay then the version what is the version of this file it is one new project root because here we are working with the workspace so here we will have the multiple applications and what will be the root folder for all those new projects that will be the projects and even over here you can notice that all the projects that we have created in the previous application those are available under this projects and the name is coming from this place then we have this project and here in the explorer you can see that we have three project let's expand this one here also we have three project web app web app 2 and my library the web app is this one web app 2 this one and this library the last one so first we have the details about this first project expand this one also so what is the type of this project my app it is an application and what is the root path of this particular application it is under the projects and the web app so here we are under the projects and the web app then the source root source root is basically the source code of this particular application we will come to this folder later prefix app prefix is also very important we will also come to this part later maybe in the next video then we have the architect in the architect you can see that there are four main important object first is build this is the builder and there are several options over here what will be the output path the index file the main file the polyfills these settings are available over here what is the asset path asset means basically where we can store all our assets it means the physical file for example the image the audio video that are specific to this particular application in this assets the styles what is the file of the style that you want to use in this application and it is this projects web app src style.css so if i expand this one my app then we have this src then we have this style.css this one it means here we are defining all the default files let's not go into more details as of now then we have this serve what will happen when you will run your application in the production environment then this will be helpful in the development environment this will be helpful extract i8 this is basically used for the internationalization let's not focus too much on this one also then we have the test this is basically used for the unit testing the configurations about the unit testing are available at this place 
okay so what is the basic use of this angular dot json file this angular dot json file is basically has all the configurations that are required for all the applications that we are using inside one single project so here we are using three projects that is why we are having the three objects and if you notice the structure of this web app and web app 2 you will notice it is same and again we have the architect we have the build we have the serve we have the extract i8n then the test the settings are similar okay now after the angular we have this package log.json we have already covered the use in the previous video then the package .json, we have already covered its use in the previous video also then we have this readme.md and this basically has some initial information about your application if you will check in this code in a repository you will see that the default page will be generated by using this readme and it basically has some details about this application my work this project was generated with angular cli this version and to run this application we can simply use ngser so basically you can say that this is the basic documentation of this application then we have this tsconfig.json file tsconfig it means type script configuration because we are using type script in the development of the angular so there must be some configurations that are available for the type script and we can define all those settings over here if you are using strict true then you can define the settings at this place what is the output directory what is the base url these settings are available at this place now we have covered all the files that are available at the root level of the workspace now let's focus on the application side in the application side we have few more extra files the first is this browser list src so this has a list of all the browsers that are supported by this application then we have already covered this editor config this is git ignore again let's focus on this angular.json file here also you can see that in the projects we already have one single project that is my application but in the workspace we were having multiple projects but here because we have just one single application that is why we have only one but the structure is same again we have the architect the build the serve extract i8n and the test okay then we have this karma.conf.js while working on the application we basically use the test cases and all the settings that are specific with this karma we define all of them over here then we have the package log package json readme and again we have this tsconfig.app.json at the first line you can see that this file is inherited from this tsconfig.json file it means it means this file is extending whatever we have written in the tsconfig.json file this tsconfig.json file was specific to the workspace level it means if you are having multiple applications in your application then all the global settings you can define in the tsconfig but if you have something some settings that are specific only for the application then you can define those settings in the tsconfig.app.json file now at this point we might have a question we were not having this tsconfig.app.json file in the workspace let's focus on that part over here at the root level we have all the files that are specific with the workspace if i expand this project let's say this web app over here you can see that we are having this tsconfig.app.json and again it is extending this tsconfig that is available at the root level here because we have multiple applications so there could be some settings that are specific to these applications and those settings are available at this place okay then at last we have the tsconfig.spec.json file and here in the spec file we define all the settings that are required for the unit testing and here also you can see that it is also inherited from this tsconfig.json file let's see over here also so here in the application under the workspace we also have this src folder here also we have the src folder we will focus on this one now then we have the browser list karma.configuration tsconfig.app.json application specific typescript configuration then the spec file okay so we have covered all the files that are available at the root level now let's focus on the src folder and this src is the main folder of your angular application all these files are basically for the configurations but the actual code that we write in the application that is available in this src folder in this src folder we further have few more folders and the files so first we have the app assets let's start with this asset if you are using any physical file for example the image 
the audio, video, you can define all these physical files over here in the assets. Environments. Here you can see we have two files environment.prod.ts it means the production and here we have the environment.ts that is the development. In a typical development scenario we generally have multiple environments development, QA, staging, production. Here you can define all those files. If you want to write any code specific to the development then you can define those settings over here. Let's take an example. Let's say in the development environment I'm using the API from some other server and in the production environment I'm using the API from some other server. So here you can define those settings. The name of your key will be same like the API URL or anything like that. You can define that part over here for the development and here in the production you can define only your production level settings. You can also generate more files if you have more environments like the QA and the staging and you can define those settings at this place. Then we have this favicon.ico and this is basically an ICO file that is visible on the browser tab. When you will run your application then on the tab you will see the title along with this favicon. Then we have this index.html file and this is basically the root html level file. Here you can see we have the doc type html, the html language, we have the head, all these things. This is the title. Then this is the base href. And here in the body section, we have something app root. This is not a known HTML tag. This is something specific to the Angular. But this is the only HTML structure that we have in the application. Whatever further HTML we will write in this application, we will not use this head HTML. We will simply use the code and that code will get insert over here at this place automatically. How that will work? That is a different question and we will learn in the upcoming videos. Then we have this main.ts file. Before this main.ts file, let's focus on this polyfills.ts. So this polyfill.ts file has the support for the old browsers. Okay. Then we have the style.css. All the global level CSS that you want to use in your application, you can define those settings at this place. And at the last, we have this test.ts. But before learning this main.ts and the test.ts, let's focus on the app folder. In the app folder, we have few files. So Let's start with this one app.module.ts. If you remember the example from the previous video about the township, just assume this Angular application as a township. And over there, I was telling that there must be at least one module in the application, and this is that module. So, this is the first module that we are using in this application app.module.ts. This is the name of this module. In the example, I was also telling that every module has a list that has a declaration about all the components and this is that list here you can see that we have one new array with name declaration inside this declaration we have all the components that are used in this single module and where is this app component so here we have this app.component.ts file so this is the main component file and if you still remember that example over there we were having four characteristics about one single person like the body structure this is the body structure. Then you are having the personality. That personality is basically this HTML file, whatever code you will write over there. Then you are having the clothes, that is the style sheet, this one, app.component.css, this is that file. And then you are also having the health report, that is this spec file. So if you will focus more on this component, then it is actually app.component.ts. The name of this component is app. And how these files are related to each other, these are the settings. This is the template URL. The template URL, it means the HTML URL for this particular component is this one. The style URL is this one. We do not have the spec file URL over here in the component because that is completely optional. If you do not want to include the spec file in your application, then it is not required. Okay. So as of now, you can see that we are having one single module, this upload module and at least one single component. And that is the basic minimum need of any Angular application. If I am creating more components in this application under this app module, then I have to declare the name of all those components over here. Just recall the example. If I want to add more family members in the house, then I have to update that list for each new member. Okay. Now let's focus on this main.ts file. When you start your application, then this is the first file that is used. And over here, we are telling our Angular application about the default module that we want to use during the bootstrap or the start. So here we have defined the name app module. So basically, we are telling the Angular application that whenever you have to start this application, just use the app module. 
okay now let's go inside the app module if you will further focus on this list here we are just having the declaration then the import it means in the import file here we are defining who all can come from the outside world in the single module and it is the browser module and this is coming from this path then we have this providers these are basically the services because as of now we are not using any service so this one is blank and this is the very important and it is bootstrap so it means whenever we are calling this app module from this main.ts file this one then which component is the default one and that setting is available at this place because we have only one component so we are using that component everywhere so when you will run your application the app.module module will be the first module and that is written over here in the main.ts and the app component will be the first component that is written over here in the app.module.ts and similarly this test.ts file is the first file that will be used while you will run the unit testing now i believe the structure of the angular application and the workspace will be clear after watching this video you must have the idea about all the files all the folders their use everything like that